Welcome to my first ever YouTube video. Do you know how crazy that sounds? Welcome to my first ever YouTube video. Because honestly, about three years ago or so, you would have never even seen me talk on Instagram, let alone create a YouTube channel. It sounds crazy. Honestly, at the same time, the reason why I wanted to do this is because I wanted to create a place where you can, you know, jump in anytime you want. You don't have to like set a time on Instagram to join me to do calligraphy, to learn illustrations, to learn how to use certain things. At the same time, I really want it to be chilled. I want it to feel like you're just going for a coffee with your best mate. I want it to feel like you are almost with me on certain days. There are days where I'm doing murals, there are days that I'm doing jackets, there are days that I'm just chilling out doing not much. <laughs> so I really wanted to bring you along with all of that. It's almost like a behind the scenes of how I personally work. And I know that I personally do like watching videos like that. I like how normal they, they feel. I like feeling like I'm almost there with them. So that's kind of what I want to bring to this YouTube channel. I was weighing up whether to do like a subscription service where you would pay a certain amount a month to watch certain videos like how to do flourishes, how to do, I don't know, basics of calligraphy. But I don't like how stuffy it feels and it doesn't feel like me. So if you have come to my classes, you will, you will know that it's more about your work rather than mine. So that again is what I want to bring into these classes. YouTube videos. Um, so yeah, hopefully you'll get a feel of everything. You'll meet Juniper, you'll see me painting a wall one day, see me painting a jacket another day, and then you'll also see me going through the nitty gritty, basically, of how to do calligraphy or how to create certain illustrations. And I really hope you like it, but please let me know if you have any feedback, any tips, tricks, or anything that you might want to learn as well. I want to hear what you have to say because this is your channel as well as mine so yeah anyway what I did want to say as well is thank you for joining me on my first ever video it feels crazy that I'm actually talking to you like this so yeah a huge thank you please if you haven't already subscribe or like this video even if you don't like it please just like it anyway so that I can actually have some sort of growth just a side note but yeah comment below with what you thought of it or anything that you'd like to add or anything that you might like to learn I want to hear it all but yeah thank you and let's just get started yeah I know that you want it. Come on, give me something. The night is young is so, so I'm going to be using an oblique pen holder which looks like this one you can actually take this part out put to put the nib in this section here and that will create a straight pen holder like this one so you might have one like this Nikko G nib because I think I feel like it's great for beginners I also use it all the time and I've been doing it for five years now it's a great nib to create thick and thin lines I'm sure you're just gonna love that one promise you I'm gonna be using my ink now the reason I'm gonna be using my ink is pretty self-explanatory um, I think it's great because it's really thick it creates lovely thick lines and lovely thin lines but also it's consistently black throughout which is just amazing you can use a rhodia pad if you want if you don't have mine's obviously a bit tattered because I've used it quite a lot but if you don't have guidelines then I'd recommend getting one of these because it is the perfect paper for calligraphy it's really thick it's really smooth it doesn't pick up any paper pulp it's a great one to use for all calligraphy and just all illustration in general or if you want to download the guidelines they're available on my website too so you can download these print them as many times as you want because it's just a pdf that will just get sent to your file right your beginner's handbook now if you don't have that don't worry we're going to be running through everything anyway on this so don't feel like it's necessary but if you have it at hand great just bring it with you you do need some water 
and some sort of tissue. I'm just using normal tissue because I don't have anything else in my house. But I've also given you a download of Bumblebee because I feel like this is a nice thing just to get started with. So it's a Bumblebee, it looks like this, and we're going to create this by the end of this video. I'm in Falcon Manor at the moment and I'm in the toilet. But I'm wearing my dress. She's apparently so desperate to leave me. Look at her. Look at the state of her. Do you really want to leave me? You want to leave me? Okay, so let's get started. So if you want to open your booklet to the first page, which is called Making Marks. Now, as you can see here, the fundamentals of modern calligraphy is to make a word using thick and thin lines. So if you've got a straight pen holder, the most important part of calligraphy is how to hold your pen. Now, as you can see here, I'm holding mine straight. I want you to hold your pen straight like this. The nib will be arched. A lot of people hold, hold their pen like this or this. Try your absolute hardest to make your pen like this. Okay, so it's roughly 45 degrees from the paper and it's straight. If this feels quite uncomfortable and you feel like your elbow is jabbing into your side, then you can twist your paper. Just make sure that your pen is parallel to your paper. Okay, so the first things first is to create thin hairline strokes like this one here. So for the, for the thin hairline strokes you want to go upwards against the nib really really softly applying zero pressure. Okay. For the thick wood stroke you want to press onto it so that the tines will split and pull down. So upwards is thin applying zero pressure and then downwards applying pressure is thick okay so the first thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing the thin lines along here some thick lines along here and then we'll move on to some different mark making as well i don't want you to worry about the guidelines as such now we'll go into those at a later stage i just want to see thick and thin I like you preferably to go straight upwards but if that is tricky just a slight diagonal what i don't want to see is this because this is easy i want you to go upwards against the nib not just side on okay let me just okay so if you were to hold a straight pen holder it would be like this the difference between a straight and, a, and an oblique pen holder is that this knocks into this position which I personally find more comfortable and then the nib would be straight can you see okay so the benefits of this in my opinion is that your hand isn't covering the pen holder let me just do it with my left hand so you can kind of see what I mean and I can see the nib clearly I also find it more comfortable but like I said there is no right or wrong they are both absolutely fine to use so again with this upwards really really gently applying zero pressure you are literally just stroking the page upwards to create a thin hairline stroke Okay, for the thick line, you want to press onto it, tines will split and pull down. So upwards is thin, down, press onto it to create a thick line. Okay. So if you have one of my inks, I want you to give it a really good shake. So again, think about what you're doing. You're going to go up. I want you to take your pen off. You don't have to be as dramatic as I am, but I'm going to be quite dramatic just to show you. So take your pen off as soon as you reach a point. That's the perfect time to dip, to then go into your next point. So you're going downwards, which is obviously thick. Take your pen off. Upwards, 
take your pen off, press down, the bottom here, upwards really really finely and then dramatically press onto it as you come around. Okay, so upwards and then pull down. Start from here, bring that up and around, pull down, up and at that point I want you to stop to then jump over that little gap where you've just written and then go into it again. And The reason why I like you to stop is because it's a perfect time to dip and it's a perfect time to make sure that everything is consistent. If you were to carry on forever, every single S will look incredibly different. Okay, now the next one is actually quite tricky. It's this one here. And sometimes in my classes I actually say don't bother because it does go against everything that I've just told you with the up and the down. But I do think it is useful with what we're gonna be doing next. So instead of going side to side, I would like you to twist your page, so your guideline like this, so that you can draw it this way. So then it still makes sense with the up and the down and I'm not just throwing something at you that doesn't really make sense. So turn your page this way and we'll go from the top here so we don't smudge it, okay? Okay, so I'll just do that with you again. Upwards, press on. So it's literally the same as the S that we've just been doing. Take your pen off to do a smaller one. Make sure that they're quite tight. Take your pen off make sure you dip every time you feel this. So one hoop, take your pen off, to then go into the next one, take your pen off, to go into the next, take your pen off, and just make sure that they spiral down. Okay, so it creates almost like a So I thought I'd just pop on here quickly um, because it is my dad's birthday today and I just wanted to say a big happy birthday to my dad. We're actually going to go to Brizola later on and if you haven't been to Brizola, like, go because it's the nicest food ever. It's in Clitheroe, it's Greek food and it's amazing, so go. But yeah, I thought I'd just quickly show you my dad's presents. He's not going to be... His birthday is today, so when I... which is... Friday and I'm going to be launching this video on Wednesday so he has seen everything so it's not too bad but yeah anyway I thought I'd show you what I've got him I've got him five beers um all from Holmes Mill again and if you've not been to Holmes Mill go to Holmes Mill because it's the best and he's definitely like me where we judge how things are by the way that they look so obviously we don't do that with people but we do that with things and yeah they are and then some classics that he actually likes. Um, so I've bought him all of this. Hopefully he likes it. And of course I've written him a card in calligraphy because I have to, don't I? And then I've got him a voucher as well. So a £30 voucher for him and my mum to go and watch the new Elvis film. That should co probably cover um, a bit of food as well. So hopefully he likes it all. But yeah. Happy birthday, Dad. I'm buzzing, let's drink up. Your death look like big fun. Come on, let's get it on. Like that, I'm finna gay some. I'm stunning. Okay, so now you've done that, 
you should have a bit of an understanding of how the pen works to create those thick and thin lines. I want to do a fun little activity together. So there should be a link underneath. If not, there's um, if you go on my website, there'll be a page that is just for free downloads and it will change all the time. But this week I'm going to be adding the bumblebee, which I think you can kind of see there. So this is the one that you're going to be drawing over the top of. This one here is one that just gives you a bit of an idea of where things will sit. As you can see on here, there are some little arrows to help you kind of work out where things go. So the, obviously an arrow going down will be pressing onto the nib to create that thicker line and so on. But if you just look at them closely, so if you broke that part, that part apart, um, you can see that you've just made that movement. This one here, if you twist it that away, you can see that we've just done that one. These ones here are thick, woods, thick lines that go downwards and so on. So you can just have a think about it. It's not as tricky as it may look. The overall effect is so good and I love this kind of thing because making marks is so vital for learning calligraphy. You really need to understand that the secret to modern calligraphy is exactly that sheet, is the basic key to calligraphy. So as soon as you've got that, then you can understand how this would work. You can understand how simple letter formations work and you can understand how flourishes work, which eventually we'll go into. Okay, so you will have downloaded this, I hope. Um, make sure that you've cleaned your nib from the last time that I saw you. So all I want you to do is dip your nib into the water. So don't stick the entire stick in there, especially if you're using one of these, because it can, it does have a hole that runs through the stick and it can collect water, which means it'll just drop out onto your page later on. And honestly, you don't want that because it's not good. So dip just the nib in and wipe it thoroughly with your tissue or kitchen roll, whatever you've got in front of you. Um, so if you've printed this one off too, you can see that there are slight little coloured arrows that kind of guide you into what you're going to be doing next. So you've got down here, for example, some little arrows that run down. Obviously that'll be a downward stroke. If you wanted, just to get a feel for it, if you want to go over them with a dry nib, as in no ink whatsoever, just to get a feel for how it's gonna be before you give it a go on this one. To then go in, so I'm gonna start here. I'm gonna press on and flick upwards to then take my pen off, go back down again. Same on this side, but it might be good if you just wanted to do one side at first, let that side dry to then go on to that one because, yeah, it would ink smudges and it takes about five minutes or so to dry, so just be careful. So same with that one, take your pen off to go in. Don't worry if you're not straightly over strictly over these guidelines, you can just use it as a rough guideline, I always do. And you're gonna go upwards, down, up, take your pen off. Upwards, down, up, take your pen off. Upwards, down, up. And so you get this spiral shape. So you should have a finished B that looks similar to this. Now if you rush it like I have you will get smudges and it will be all over your hand but I think it would actually look quite nice as well if you were to cut this out and put it on maybe a coloured sheet of paper. Like I said before you can put different coloured inks in there just to make it a bit more attractive. This would actually look really nice in my opinion if you had like a blue card. Uh, like a navy card and white ink. You'd be surprised how nice white ink really is. It's so good, I love it. But anyway, I hope you've enjoyed that. Um, please send your pictures of this and your practice work as well, so these, um, to the calligraphy room on Facebook. So it's called the calligraphy room. I'll again leave a little link underneath. It'd be great if you could join that and just share your progress, um, but yeah. I hope you like it.